the land down under's messiah of music. You know, when he came out, we'd never heard anything quite like him. We'd heard things extremely similar, but still, nothing quite like his. When Kristoff and his crusaders ruled the airwaves, nothing else mattered. I mean, that man carried such an ego with him. He backsassed the queen, for Christ's sakes. Well, she's not my bloody queen. From musical icons. I remember reading the papers and thinking, no, 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 this can't be true. This isn't a Kristoff thing to do. To tabloid headline. How the kings of new, new wave Australian neo-psychedelic rock climbed to the top of the pop culture mountain and fell right back down to the valley of irrelevancy. This is the Kristoff and the Crusaders story. Kristoff was born to this relatively modest home in New South Wales, Australia. Kristoff had his first run-in with the law at an early age, having his first assault charge at age four. Well look, just because I was running around in Pampas doesn't mean I laid back and took any disrespect. Kristoff's childhood was long and largely uneventful. You know, I pretty much did kid things, I suppose. It wasn't until high school I discovered I was, in fact, a prodigy of sorts. Kristoff's talent blossomed when he formed a garage band, the Blue Kilometer, with his fellow classmate, Nat Raldings. I don't like the term garage band. I prefer the term pre-fame music ensemble. We had some good times. We made some good music together. And we were easily one of the best bands in our high school to listen to. You know, me and Nat connected on a genius kind of level. Like uh, Einstein and Bill Gates. Except, instead of being geniuses, we were making beautiful music. Yeah, yeah, Kristoff was kind of a prick, but I tolerated him for the sake of the group. It's a shame how the group broke up, really. Didn't need to happen. Well, the prick stole my dog! I literally remember him tearing up the poor pup's leash with a chainsaw, and he still denies it. I love that dog. Just because I happened to receive a dog that looked and behaved exactly like Nat's dog Tallulah, which disappeared under mysterious circumstances, does not mean that I stole Nat's dog. My little Chalupa is nothing like Nat's dog Tallulah. Hey, baby. Oh, we don't talk anymore. I mean, sometimes I see the prick walking down the street with my dog, and I shoot him a dirty look, but that's about it. The Blue Kilometer was no more. It was really humbling, you know. Seeing everything go so well turned to shit. I, I knew I had to start over. And work within a part of me that I thought was gone forever. So I entered a creative renaissance of sorts. Fresh out of the Blue Kilometer and high school, Kristoff hired then unknown artist Mickey Whittles and Ronnie Turbulence to be the rhythmic engineers of his new band, Kristoff and the Crusaders. With the group formed, it was time to get to work. Kristoff's creative process was absolutely out of control. You know, as majestic and legendary an artist that Kristoff is, he was a bit of a nut job backstage. He always, always insisted that we wear matching brown turtlenecks. One time I showed up in grey and he nearly made me leave the bloody band. With the matching turtlenecks, we as musicians were able to reach a level of unison that we never would have been capable of before. No one has complained about the bloody album. Why complain about the frickin' turtlenecks? And call me crazy, but I think the turtlenecks separate the amateurs from the gods. And to feel it to music, as he would say, um, he would turn off all the lights in the studio and make us strum our guitars till we were silly. After eight months of a rigorous, often tumultuous recording session, Kristoff's first album was released. Martini Hourglass shot up to number one on the charts. The album was a revelation. It really made me realize that I'm the Picasso of song, and he wouldn't ask the bloody guy to put down his brush. With hit singles, Is My Heart a Playground, and Not Quite Finished Yet, the album quickly became both a financial and critical success. A summer tour of the continental U.S. and parts of the Ukraine soon followed. The iconic music video for Is My Heart a Playground 
surpassed 2 billion hits on YouTube in the first week alone. Do you think my heart's a playground? Cause you played with my heart And you sat on my swing And you grabbed my monkey bar Do you think my heart's a playground? Cause it's no joke to me You left a gaping hole in my heart And wood chips on my With the band entering the pop culture mainstream, Christoph looked to old-time friend Bob Wright to produce and direct the band's direction. So, okay, we've all heard things, but is it true all the proceeds of the album went to BP Oil? My client doesn't have to reply to these wild allegations. These aren't allegations. Explain this headline. Christoph admits it. All proceeds to BP Oil. Well, that's a fantastic paper, but frankly, I don't start reading till the sun's warm. Uh, till then, I'm really focusing on my music. Uh, words that aren't my own ruin the creative process. So. How do you respond to the claims that uh, most of your music is plagiarized? My client insists that there's no correlation between his song Piano Guy and Billy Joel's Piano Man. Uh, could you play a little bit of Piano Guy for us? Well, I guess I, I could try a bit for you. Sing me that song, you're the piano guy. Sing me that song right now. You would agree that your song bears an awful resemblance uh, to The Piano Man. Sing us a song, you're the piano man. Sing us a song Are you serious? This is a bloody outrage. Billy Joel, he's a fraud as far as I'm concerned. He's stealing my music, you can hear it. We're gonna file a lawsuit. Get on it right now, this is ridiculous. The impending lawsuit was dropped when Christoph was informed Billy Joel's Piano Man came out 40 years prior to his song, Piano Guy. The tour, however, was an incredible success. Critics and fans alike praised Christoph's energetic performances and unique stage presence. And, you know, the thing with Christoph is, uh, he'd always had this big, blossoming band of broads following around like he was the messiah. The girls? Yeah, I had quite a few of them. Nothing romantic, though. They mainly just followed me around and showered me with compliments. Compliments drive me. They're the reason I make music. Christoph, you're so beautiful. Thank you so much, darling. That's what I like to hear, Michelle. Oh, your sugar jar's running a bit low. You might want to pick up the compliments, all right? Let me tell you, the girls were crazy. Why, I had broads on the east side, broads in the west. Girls in Fulton, Scriber, Red Creek. Even some fine dames in Hannibal. And uh, did you ever get intimate with them? Oh, heavens no. Why, they just tell me good luck and all that before the shows. However, with Kristoff's ego growing, the band was often sidelined by Kristoff's superstardom. I mean, one thing I've learned is that no one really cares about the bass player. I mean, with Kristoff leading us on, I'd just kind of stand in the back and strum. You know, I don't really think people appreciate the artistic merit that we have. Why, honest to God, I consider myself on par with the greats, such as Eddie Van Halen and John Mayer. But me and Ronnie actually do quite a bit of stuff independent of Kristoff, while we actually take care of our cats together. So uh, here we got, um, this is Mittens, this is Sparkles, um, we got Cinnamon, um, there's Tittles, oh, who can forget Mr. Tim's? Oh, oh, he's a wily bastard he is. They're not cats. They're not? Well, we certainly spent a lot on cat litter, didn't we? Kristoff was doing it all. He was on top of the world. His hit tour opened the door to other ventures. He made his cinematic debut in the hit film, The Aussie That Loved Me. Look, baby, we've had some good times together. That much is true. But you know my father, he simply won't let me love someone like you. Please, baby, let me have one more taste of your bountiful lips. It's true. The taste of your lips will linger on mine until the day God puts me under. But my father would rather see me dead than burying a child of a koala-loving, 
boomerang throwing Aussie such as you. To hell with him. You know he'll always be my little dingo sugar plum. Our love who was written in the coral reef it was. I'm sorry, my father wants me to find someone who can grip and care for a slender dame such as me. Please, girl. At least give me a hug to remember you by. This Aussie can only go so long without longing for a touch. Get your hands off my daughter, you dirty Australian! I must run home, back to Sydney. But I'll always remember you as the girl that loved this Aussie. And I'll remember you as the Aussie that loved me. Didn't you hear me? Hands off my little girl, you Barbie girl and convict! Dad, don't make me leave him! Listen, honey. I know what I want for you. It's a man of valor and respect. Not a dingo riding, kangaroo hunting, filthy scumbag Australian! Come on, let's go home. And you better keep your shrimp off my daughter's Barbie! With all this critical success, one might ask, what could go wrong? That question was answered at the Junior Variety Show of 2016, with Kristoff and the Crusaders headlining the show. The day before the show, he was twitching and sniffing. He was even more unpleasant to be around than he usually was. I almost felt bad for the sap until I remembered all of our payment has come in the form of My Little Pony memorabilia. We love our babies more than anything, but this is ridiculous. With 30 minutes before the show, the band was preparing for the performance of a lifetime. No one knew what tragic events were about to take hold. Well, prior to shows, um, Christoph always demanded cubed honeydew melons in his prep station. Uh, we don't know why, but he was very particular about his melons. I remember that night, the stagehand had put the, the wrong melons in uh, Christoph's fruit bowl. I mean, we in the band knew that you simply didn't mess with Christoph's melons. I mean, Jesus, you can do whatever you want with the man, but you simply didn't mess with his melons. What kind of bloody idiot do they take me for? What's going on, Christoph? I think I don't know the difference between a honeydew and a sprite melon. They think this is amateur hour in melon town? This is a hexagon or polygon, look at it! I won't even dignify this melon by putting it in me mouth hole. You have to try to be this wrong. Look, I'm trying to be the bigger man, but this crew isn't intentionally sabotage my performance. If I can't have me melons working back here, what makes me think me abs is gonna work out there? Look, Christoph, man, stop worrying about your bloody melons, all right? We need you out there. Oh, you need me? Well, you know what I needed a few minutes ago with some bloody cute melons. And you know what the Beatles say, you can't always get what you want. However, later that night, Kristoff would appear on stage with a message that would change his image forever. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Well, because we got a few screw-ups backstage you don't appreciate the concept of melon integrity, you won't be getting your superstar tonight. Oh. Yeah, that's right. You can enjoy whatever these blokes have prepared for you. I'm sure it's thrilling. Good night, you worthless hellhounds. Well, Mickey, we've, uh, we've written quite a few new songs about our cats. That's right, Ronnie. We've actually learned quite a lot from our little pals. I guess with Kristoff out of the picture, it's just you, me, and all our furry little friends. Despite this shocking meltdown, Ronnie and Mick amazed the crowd with their own performance, with songs such as Sweet Sweet Cinnamon and Paws Off, That's My Cat. The performance led the band into large critical success and superstardom in their own right. They became the last crusade and quickly compiled their first album, Feline Folk Songs. It quickly dethroned Martini Hourglass from the pop charts after 10 consecutive weeks at number one. Kristoff was no longer the king. The shocking meltdown led to weeks of reclusion and living life out of the cameras and superstardom. Eight weeks went by with no sign of Kristoff and fans speculated the worst. However, during Kristoff's absence, videos that were recorded during the Martini Hourglass sessions were leaked on the internet. In the videos, Kristoff discussed kicking Ronnie and Mickey out of his group. Hey Kristoff fans, it's me again. Um, yeah, they sh they've shut off my air conditioning, so I'm gonna have to do the rest of... I'm gonna have to record the rest of this album with shirtless, because it's very, very hot. Um, you know, you gotta make sacrifices for your art, which brings me to my next statement. Um, 
I don't know if I'm going to have to keep Mickey and Ronnie in the band anymore because um, Mickey doesn't know a G chord from a falsetto and Ronnie... Actually, let me get something straight. So, Mickey has come over to the studio and he's laid down a few guitar solos. He's given me something to work with. Ronnie, not a single thing. I've done every single bass line on this record. I don't understand why we're keeping him in the group. Frankly, like... He's under house arrest from all of his recent sexual escapades, but it's just... I don't get it. I think we're going to have to kick him out of the band. And I think we might have to kick... Mi you know, I think we might have to kick Mickey out of the band, too, because my, my genius is starting to overwhelm even myself, and I don't want to hurt the people around me just because I'm more musically talented and smarter and better looking. So, I mean, we'll see how it goes, but... I'm going to have to at least kick Ronnie out of the band, if not Mickey as well. So, I'll get back to you. Goodbye. These videos caused a media hailstorm, and Ronnie and Mickey were quick to respond to both the videos and Kristoff's unexplained disappearance. Uh, what's up, mates? Um, we just wanted to address the rumors that Kristoff has been spreading, uh, of most of the media. Kristoff is doing just fine. Um, we haven't heard from him. He's not accepting our charitable donations or our phone calls, but uh, as far as we know, he's doing just fine. And uh, Ronnie, you have anything to say? Um, I honestly couldn't care less. I mean, he, he tried to kick me out of the band after all. Said I wasn't pulling my way. I mean, screw him. I don't, well, I, I don't need him. I don't, I don't think that's necessarily a thing that you need to be addressing. I just, I need to put myself out there. I mean, you, you all saw that. That's bull. Ronnie, I'm sick of you and your emo b You know, yep. I wake up to my chemical <laughs> I'm sick of this b of you, quite frankly. You know what? You know what? I don't need you. I don't need Christoph. Right, well, I don't need get, anyone! Get out. Miraculously, after weeks of hibernation, Christoph came out of his reclusiveness to celebrate Arbor Day. We were able to track him down and arrange an interview with the multi-talented and once coveted musician, Christoph. So, uh, what's the deal with the eye patch? Actually, it's quite symbolic, really. You know, I used to see the world with two eyes. But after the pain and backlash caused by both my fans and my bandmates, I see the world with with one eye. It shows that no matter how anyone hurts me, I'll still maintain my positive outlook. What does the future hold for Kristoff? Well, I don't bloody know. Unfortunately, Kristoff's unwillingness to talk about his future musical projects or his personal life led us to ask Ronnie and Mickey about their once good friend, Kristoff. So when did you last see Kristoff? Last time I saw Kristoff, he was working the drive through to Wendy's in, I believe it was Sheboygan, Wisconsin. See, I was, this was right after the release of um, me and uh, Ronnie's folk album, and we were living it up in Sheboygan, and we decided why not stop by, get ourselves a Wendy's burger, pull up to the drive through there's Kristoff with his hair gel and his fur coats, and I don't know why they had hired him. I think that's when he lost it. Um, I haven't heard from him since. I see him on the news freaking out, you know, calling the queen a prick. But, um, as far as I know, he's mentally stable. He's just, he's Kristoff. I mean, he was freaking out backstage about something. I, I forget what it was. I mean, it was probably something absolutely ludicrous. I mean, I have feelings. People don't care about them. I mean, what should I care about whatever Kristoff's going through? What does the future hold for Ronnie Turbulence? I'm trying to get um, a few of my pals in uh, Three Days Grace. Um, I'm, I'm great pals with all the dudes in My Chemical Romance. I mean, you know, some people don't really like that band, but I happen to think it's, um, it, it resonates with me, that their, their music, it gets to me. So I definitely want to start a little project with them, maybe a single, you know. What does the future hold for Mickey Whittles? So what do you think the future holds? Well, um, actually, you may have noticed I ditched the accent. It's because I never had an accent to begin with. Um, I was just doing that for the sake of Kristoff's ego. He wouldn't he wouldn't stand to have an American from small town Iowa on his group. But um, no, I'm thinking I'm, I'm getting into like you know the hardcore rock scene, man. You know, you get some real some real bangers out there. I'm kind of evolving into the hip hop thing too, and I'm thinking maybe starting kind of a little thug rap group, you know, hardcore thugs, you know, ganging up on these fools like Ronnie. You know, the thing about Ronnie is that he's just such an emo b you know. That's really what broke the group. I would be sleeping 
either sleeping or going to Denny's at 4 a.m. And, and I just hear him blasting the same songs over and over again. And I'm like, Ronnie, stop playing Evanescence. Christoph was noticeably silent during our interview with him. He returned to the woods when our interview was done, and no one has seen him since. However, recently, rumors have arose that Christoph is getting back into the music scene, and that he may be recording his very own comeback album. Meanwhile, Ronnie has officially gone full emo. He has formed his very own emo supergroup, and is seen in public with emo face paint and other emo apparel. He, too, is also working on an album to revitalize his career. Mickey Whittles, on the other hand, has gone the complete opposite direction. He has gone into the hip-hop scene and now goes by the name Izzy J. He, too, has an album scheduled to release soon. So while the world waits for Kristoff's triumphant return, we can all only do one thing. Sit down, turn on Martini Hourglass, and have a little fun. Time flows along with my martini. I'm thinking of maybe... Getting a little frisky Got three shots of bourbon Chase it with some whiskey Let the time pass Martini hourglass